When you get a new laser, or in this case, upgrade from the 20 watt to the 40 watt laser, the first project that you should do is a test grid. This is going to make life so much easier. Hey everyone, welcome to Popal's Workshop. In the previous video, I took the 20 watt D1 Laser Pro and upgraded it to the 40 watt. And I went through each of the steps in detail. And I'm going to put a link right down below in the description so that you'll be able to reference that video. Today, what I want to be able to do is put the brand new 40 watt laser to the test and do some cutting of different materials. Now, one thing that I had said, all of the settings that I currently have in Lightburn are going to change because this is a much more powerful laser. So we're gonna be doing the test grids to be able to see exactly what power settings that I need for the different materials. One of the questions that I often get is when I do a project is what power and feed rates are you using? Well, it really depends on the laser that you have and each laser is a little bit different. So I always encourage people to do the test grid and it is amazing how many people want to skip that step. I turned on the Lightburn software and I have the brand new X-Tool 40 watt laser turned on. And the first thing you're going to notice is the fan is not running. The only time the fan is going to run is when you're actually cutting something or engraving something. So the first step, let's get this machine homed. So that process is done. Now I have a small piece of uh, plywood in. Let's frame this and see how it's going to look. And the first thing you notice is that the fan will turn on because the machine is moving. And that completes the framing process, so we know what's going to fit on there. One of the nice features in Lightburn is that you can come up right up here to the top and select Laser Tools. And under the Laser Tools, you can come down to this right here where it says Material Test. And then you have this window that pops up and you can put in any parameters that you want. Now this right here is going to be your vertical rows and this is going to be 10 and we're going to set this up at the speed and we're going to go from 600 millimeters per minute to 18,000 millimeters per minute and we're going to do this at um, the five millimeters uh, high little squares and over here on the horizontal column we will do this at 10 again and this is gonna be the power. We'll go from 10% power to 100% power. And again, the grid is gonna be the five millimeters. From there, we can actually preview it and we can change and put in any numbers that we wish. Now, for an example, I really don't wanna go at 18,000 millimeters per minute, but I will put in 7,000 millimeters per minute. And I think that is gonna give a much more accurate uh, view of what we need to do with this laser and then from there I can hit preview and at the preview you can see this is going to be the 7,000 at the 10% and then you have this broken down all the way down to this 600 millimeters per minute so if you like that from there we can hit OK one thing that I forgot to mention is number passes. If you saw up on the very top of that preview, it said four passes. Well, that's really too many, and I didn't catch it. So rather than just continue with making a big mess, I decided to stop it and start over and set it up as one pass. And I'll show you how I did that in just a second. And while I'm there, I've actually made another adjustment. I changed the text to 7,000 millimeters per minute with 30% power. And if you'll remember from some of the other previous videos, this is far, far less uh, power and a much higher speed than what I've done before when I'm engraving the different text or different uh, pictures. So this is a 
amazing what you can accomplish just with this 40 watt laser. So much faster with so much less power. The next thing I want you to notice is look at the individual squares. They are looking very sharp, very crisp, and it is cutting all the way through. You can see how those little small pieces are dropping down and they are cut all the way through on the one pass with only 30% power. Okay, this is all finished now. Let's take a look at it. And the first thing you're going to notice is really pretty clean up in here. Now, as far as the letters, this was going at 7,000 millimeters per minute with 30% power. And you can see this is the grid right there. And that looks really good. And you can see how that translated over into the actual text. I could have probably gone with 20% power. And that would have done real well, too. But now that I have this, I can see exactly where it's going to cut. So at 600 millimeters per minute at 40% power, I know that it'll cut all the way through with one pass. And you can see on the back, that's also very clean. So with this now, I can use this to be able to set up any project that I want and know exactly what I need to set up to be able to get the look that I'm after. And this is why it's so important to do these test grids. Now this plywood is actually a two millimeter plywood. Now I'm gonna put in a five millimeter and we're gonna run the same test. Now the only thing that I've changed is the thickness of the plywood. Everything else is gonna stay exactly the same. Now this five millimeter piece of plywood actually is not laying completely flat on this honeycomb, but I think it'll still do okay. As it's starting to cut the individual squares, you can see at the 600 millimeters per minute at roughly about 60% power, it's beginning to cut all the way through. Now, as far as this material, this is a five millimeter floor underlayment type plywood. It's a very inexpensive plywood but you can see exactly how this is performing. The other thing I want you to notice too, if you look up close, you're gonna have a little bit more of the residue from the smoke. And that's partially because this underlayment has a very uh, definite grain to the material and it doesn't allow that um, soot to be able to be blown off completely. And that's what you're seeing there. But as far as the engraving itself, the engraving looks virtually identical to the previous example that we had just done. So you can see that you can use some pretty inexpensive plywood to be able to get some good uh, positive results. Okay, it's all finished now. Let's take a look at it. Let's see exactly where those pieces were starting to fall out. And if you look at this, and it doesn't help that I rub my hands over it, because that little bit of ash will still kind of smear into the plywood. But instead of the 600 millimeters per inch at 60% power, it's really more like 70% power is where those pieces actually were dropping out. And again, this is five millimeters thick with the one pass. And on the back side, you can see it's very, very clean. I have an old slate tile that I've used for tests before, and I'm gonna test this out to get the speed and the power for doing a slate tile. I took off the shield off the bottom of the laser so that one, you could see it a little bit better and two, I did not want it bumping into the little rubber feet. Now off camera, I had done some tests to be able to get the best feed rate and the power settings for this. Doing these tests to be able to determine the best setting to be able to engrave the various products is very, very important. And I'm trying to really stress that. And I'm trying to use products that you're actually going to be using in your shop. And if you're making money with the laser, these are the most common items between the wood, the slate tiles, and we're going to be doing the uh, coasters with the ceramic tile with the Norton white tile method in just a moment. And I think those are the most common items that people are using to be able to make a little bit of money using their lasers. 
If this is just a hobby for you and you're making different gifts for family and friends, that's okay too. I still think this is probably the most common item that people use as far as the various materials. If you'd like to see me test some different materials using this laser, please leave me a comment down in the description and I'll be happy to be able to put together a series of tests doing the different products that you guys are recommending that I test out. Let's take a look at this now. And that actually looks really good. So that setting worked extremely well. And this information down here, that was just from an old test that I had done. But I'm going to write the speed and the power of this onto this slate. And I'll be able to save this also. Now taking a look at the settings, you can see that I'm running at 2,000 millimeters per minute with 30% power. In previous videos where I was doing the slate tiles, I would be using the 1,270 millimeters per minute and 50% power. So I could almost double the speed and reduce the power to accomplish the same results. When I opened up the library, under the settings for the slate tile, my original settings were 1,270 millimeters per minute with 50% power. And now I want to change that. We're going to go with 2,000 millimeters per minute, and I'm going to drop the power down to 30%. And that is going to give me the look that I want with the 40 watt laser. And I'll just hit OK. Now for the next test, I want to take a ceramic tile, which is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, and that represents with the red line. And I want to go over here to the military logos, and I think I'm just going to pull in the Army. Now right now, when I bring this in, this is way, way too large. I want to go over here to the height. With this locked, I'm going to take the larger measurement, in this case, the height. I'm going to make that 3.5. And because that is locked, that's going to keep it in proportion, and it'll reduce the width also. And then I can highlight both of these items and use the little bullseye right there and center both of them. Now, just see, it's going to bring it right up into here, and I think that will look good. I opened up the library for the Norton White Tile Method, and the old setting was 508 millimeters per minute with 60% power. Well, that's going to change. I'm going to put this setting in at 1,500 millimeters per minute with 35% power. And that will be significantly faster with a lot less power to be able to engrave this. So I'll just hit OK now. And that changes this over here. And I have it in the library at the same time. So let me grab the glasses. We'll hit Start. And we'll get this engraving and see what it looks like. Now one of the things that I want to talk about is why it's so important to be able to have a stronger, more powerful laser. Well, one, you can do the project quicker with less power. And why is that important? Well, if you're in business trying to make a little bit of money on the side, or if this is your full-time job, speed is the money. You've got to be able to turn out your projects quickly. And by being able to have a more powerful laser, you're able to be able to do the projects quicker with less power. And why is less power important? Here's why, guys. Diode lasers have a lifespan. When they get to that lifespan, they die. That's it. It's over with. Now, if you look at the studies, if you look at the different tests, a diode laser at 100% power is going to last somewhere around 8,000, maybe 9,000 hours. And that's quite a bit of time. But here's the thing. If you reduce the power, and if you can do the project with less power and faster from the standpoint of this laser, that laser is going to last a lot longer. And that's why in very, very few cases in the videos that I do, I use 100% power. I try always to use less than 100% power. In fact, I try to use as little power as possible to be able to get the job done. I want my lasers to last for a long, long time. I don't want to run out. It's just 8,000 hours. The tile is now finished. Let's take a look at it and get it all cleaned up. Now I'm using lacquer thinner and a paper towel to be able to clean this off. 
Now this was the white paint that I had sprayed on and I did this real quick this afternoon and just sprayed a couple of coats and let it sit out in the sun for about 15 minutes and then put it on the laser. So let's see what it looks like all cleaned up. Well, there you have it. I think that turned out quite nice for something that I uh, took about 15 minutes to be able to paint and let it dry in the sun and engraved it. Well, there you have a good introduction and a 40 watt laser by X-Tool. I've been able to hopefully convince you to always do the test grid to be able to see exactly what is going to work best. And I did this with two millimeter plywood and then I, I did one with the five millimeter plywood and this was with one pass. Now this way you can actually pick and choose the best settings for your feed rate and your power. From there I did the uh, slate coaster and I found the best power and speed for that which was the 2000 millimeters per minute with the 30% power. Now that worked real well. I also did a ceramic tile for you. Now if I did this one again, I'd probably change it. I was debating on which one to use. Now this was 1500 millimeters per minute and 35% power. I think what I would probably do is slow this down just a little bit to around 1400 um, millimeters per minute. Now I was debating on this to be able to decide which way I wanted to go. And I decided to go a little bit faster with the 35% uh, power. And I think it worked really good. But this is why you do the test and run those test screws to see what works best for you. Now, will this cut thicker material? Absolutely. Will it cut a two before as a lot of people have done out there on the YouTube land? Yeah, it probably will. And you run the risk of damaging your laser and causing a fire. You really don't want a fire in your house. So I would suggest not doing as other YouTubers have done and try to cut it to before. It just doesn't make sense. What I've tried to show you is what you're going to use to be able to make money. People use wood projects, slate coasters, being able to do the ceramic tile. That is going to be able to speed up your process, use less power, and your laser is going to last a lot longer. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. I hope I was able to show you just what this 40 watt uh, laser by X-Tool is capable of. It is really amazing. It really speeds up the project and you can use so much less power to be able to do the same job. Now, if you like this video, by all means, go ahead and give me the thumbs up and don't forget subscribe right down there below and hit that bell notification. I really would appreciate it. And leave me a comment to tell me what type of projects that you're doing, what type of power settings that you're using, and are you finding that this 40 watt laser by X-Tool is getting the jobs done a lot quicker with the less power. So until next time, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the video, and I really, really do appreciate you watching these videos. So thank you very much, and until next time, bye-bye.